Did you know there's a new tea Dracula patron? Now hosting Seven Tears. The rewards can range from exclusive audios. I hope you don't mind that I got up here and sat on the bed with you. To updates. But, hi there. It's nice to uh, see you all. To voting on new content. From $1 to $50. I'm forever thankful. See you there. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing another LARP video. I think, funnily enough, just in time for Empire. Today I'm going to be talking to you about something I've actually experienced at Empire LARP. Now it's one of my favourite scenes I've ever roleplayed today. I'm going to tell you about the time that my character, who I played, Annalise, met her twin brother. This might seem like a joyful thing, this might even seem like a happy thing, but for dear old Annalise, it was not. So, sit in with me today while I tell you the very harrowing tale of how Anna met her brother. My old character, Annalise, was from Dawn, but was originally a person of high guard. She came from a very strange organisation that was hell-bent on creating a different world and a different empire. They believed that the Empire thrived on certain things, those things being order and conformity. Obviously, this didn't really fit into the Empire's moulds. They didn't care who they hurt, they didn't care who they killed. They wanted the Empire to be the way they saw it. A better Empire. A greater Empire. And of course, they were very wrong. My character Annalise was raised in this environment in Highguard. She was the heir of the top dog, the man who ran it, her father Gabriel. He was the one that was hell-bent on having the Empire the way he saw fit. And of course, he raised his heir to think the same way. There is actual canonical debate whether Annalise was cursed or not as to not see the same way her father did. But either way, she revolted. She escaped. My story started with my character Annalise arriving in Dawn, on the run from her father and his organisation. I was lucky enough that some Empire players took time out of their game to play chapter members and to come and try and hunt me and my friends down. Annalise, who at this time had become a Dawnish Earl, had told herself that she was going to try and make a better path for herself. She told herself that her and her people would never see the same terrifying ideals that her father and his people did. And the whole point of their organisation was to take her father down on Well of Death. That meant, very plainly, that if you joined Annalise in her cause, you couldn't just walk away from it. Obviously, if people had OC reasons to do so, they could leave and come as they wished. But in the IC terms, you were in it for life, as when you left, you were most likely going to be put on Annalise's father's list and killed. Annalise could be described as a very melancholic character. She was not the happiest person in the world and she tried her best to get on with everyday life, but everyone knew she still had secrets. The life that she had been raised in was one of strangeness and fear. There was never a normal place for her to be, until people found out she wasn't the only Beaumont heir. Letters started arriving, letters stating that there was somebody that the people had to hand over that Annalise, their Earl, knew more than she let on and that she would know what this letter meant and the gravity of the situation. For the sake of this story and to protect my friend's identity, we're going to be calling his character Hazard, obviously not his real name. The letter detailed of this Hazard person and that Annalise knew the gravity of this letter she had been sent. Theories started to pop up, both IC and OC, about who this person was. It was no small thing. At that time in game, the players who were playing her father's people actually had a member captive from Annalise's group. It was on pain of death that they gave her information about this hazard person or handed him back over to get their member back. Of course, Annalise and her group did not have this hazard person. Luckily though, the other group handed over the house member once again and they were returned but still there was no news on this hazard person. It was at this time that Annalise's adoptive father, a high guard player who I hold very very dear to my heart, came and told her some harrowing information. A man had come by, claiming to be her brother. Not only that, but 
He was looking for her. He was described as tall, wearing red and black, the colour of her father's chapter, and he seemed very intent on finding her. They said he was harsh-spoken and frightening. For many years, Annalise had been convinced that her brother, Hazard, was very much so dead. Her and Hazard were raised together. They were twins, after all, complete identical versions of one another, and they looked just like their father. It was the air and the spare, and Hazard knew this. They were raised in a toxic and horribly abusive environment, leaving the two of them close but resentful towards each other. The heir only wanted to be free, the spare only wanted to be the heir. How could they ever get along? When Annalise finally revolted, she did ask her brother to come with her, but he refused for unknown reasons. Given that he stayed behind, and given that Annalise knew her father's wrath, she was convinced for many years that he was dead. It had been ten years at this point. And just as that happened, as Annalise's adoptive father came to tell her, he said, Behind me, twelve o'clock, there is a man walking. Is that your brother? I look across the glory square, and I see Hazard's player, walking very slowly, in this big fur mantle cape, and these glasses, and this priest wear, which was very, very interesting to see. And he was walking, staring everyone down, staring everything down, and Annalise answered truthfully, it looks like him, but I need to see him up close. I need to get a look at his eyes. Anyone that has played with me when I played Annalise will know that the true Beaumont heirs have these icy grey eyes and black hair that falls in a very specific style. He had sunglasses on though. She had to get a look. Even though her true brother Hazard was indeed a priest and looked identical to this man walking, the eyes would tell her everything. And amazingly, and this still spins me on my head to this day, when we were chasing after Hazard's player, he goes behind some tents and vanishes. And to this day, none of us have any idea how he did it because he was walking and people sprinted after him because obviously he was antagonistic. If he was a fake or if he was Annalise's real brother, that was also a problem because he could be a spy for their father. People ran after his player and he was gone. The player to this day is convinced that he says he was just walking, he wasn't trying to hide, but he bamboozled us so much that day. So after we lose sight of him, Annalise is obviously inconsolable and she's holding on to her father figure. Like a child, really, she was being faced with a ghost of her past. Her brother was the next best thing to seeing her father, really. And given that the twins looked so much like her father, obviously her brother looked a lot more like him. This was an instant source of trauma for Annalise, but she pressed on even so, because if that really was her brother, that was a big deal. So we continue, we run after Hazard, and we see him at the top gate. Um, if you've been to Empire before, if you've been in Dawn, you'll know just before you hit the Brass Coast and the market, there is a gate. He stood there, looming, watching, and we watch from the Glory Square, horrified. He was described as a crow, and it was the most perfect description. He had this massive big fur mantle on, these red priest lapels, he had these glasses and this like red outfit, and he was just stood watching. We literally, there was about 10 of us, all pick up our dresses and capes and we start sprinting towards Hazard. And all he does is the most stereotypical villainous flips his cape and starts walking away. It must have been about a 30 second run to get to where he was, but by the time we were there, he was gone. Once again, the player is convinced he was just walking, but at the time, given that this character literally kept appearing and reappearing, it was fantastic and really felt frightening. Because me and this player didn't really know each other very well. We are amazing friends now. But at that time, I had no idea how he was going to play this scene. I just knew he was going to act his ass off. So a small group of us actually get up to him and he is just walking. And the people who were playing my house at that time were doing very well. They were physically running in front of him and getting in his way 
and saying, can we see your eyes? Can we please just see your eyes? Really, really getting in his way. And to all of our shocks, he screams back, get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> and when I say screams, he screams this at this player and I physically see them rear back from him in fear. And that's when Annalise's adopted father turned and said, does he sound like him? And she said, oh yes, that sounds like him. Annalise is holding back at this time. She was terrified and I wanted to see how the scene played out with Hazard and the others. So I was holding back and once again, another player got in Hazard's face and said, if she really is your sister, just stop, at least look at her. And he once again screams back, get the fuck out of my way. And this was a big deal. If you've been in Anvil before, you know that a lot of big scenes kind of happen condensed into tents and in small areas. This was in public. This was in the Anvil roads. And people were taking notice and starting to follow along and watch because Hazard was doing such a good job. So we get to the back of Wintermark and he's still walking away and Hazard is very tall so he was walking extremely fast. And as he starts to get away, Annalise runs down and screams his name at him. It was an abbreviated version of his name that they used together during their childhoods and he finally stops. All of the group gets up to him and gets in his way and he has his back turned to us all and the tension in the air, you could cut it with a knife, truly like a rusty knife could get through it. Everyone was suspended and so many people were stood watching, confused about what was happening. Annalise at this time continues to go, brother, if that is you, please, please, please my brother. Because to her, it's like a person coming back from the dead, but for Hazard, it was not. A person who was playing my house at that time turns to Hazard and says, she's your sister, she thought you were dead, the least you can do is look at her. And this is when the uneasiness and the crazy good acting of this scene falls into play. Hazard laughs very gently before turning around and starting to scream again. He barks back. My sister, my sister. She left me to die. She left me here, she left me to die. She never came back. This straight away sent everyone coming back from this man because this was in public and you know, seeing this character in a public area where people were watching it was fascinating to really see him let go and lash out at people. And that's when Annalise's adoptive father comes up behind her and puts a hand on her shoulder. I think he knew that something was afoot. And that's when Hazard turns towards Annalise, starts walking up to her, pulls out a sword and rears it up above his head as if he's going to kill her. There is an audible gasp that comes from the Anvil crowd. And at that point, Annalise's adoptive father wraps his arms around her and drags her back into his space. Like, literally almost pulled me off my feet uh, to get me away from him. A total, I think, adrenaline and father instincts at that point to get me away from Hazard. But as Hazard is there, sword above his head, he starts to shake. And he tosses it behind him. Other players run and retrieve the sword and basically keep it hidden in a way. And he falls back and he falls to his knees. And he's just there on his knees, shaking. Annalise comes down to his level and tries to start to talk to him when one of her other house members pipes up. They start screaming at him, you, I recognize you. You're the one who killed my parents. And that moment, Annalise rears back and this house member really tries to go for him. They were dragged out of the way for another, so they didn't basically cause a crime. But it was that moment where Annalise had realized that her brother had not only not been dead, but had been actively working for her father. That's when Annalise's adoptive father, who is has a lot of power, I guess, in Highguard, comes up, grabs him and they headbutt together. 
I don't know what conversation they were having, but you could feel once again just the electricity in the air. This, I guess, martyr of good and this martyr of evil were together, head butted, obviously having this very high guardy kind of prairie priest conversation because Hazard was obviously in priest clothes. And when they reared back, Annalise's adoptive father was like, you know, he can have another chance, we can fix this, but Annalise was not so sure. This man had killed so many people clearly and the fact that it happened just to be one of her housemates, the chances of that were so slim and that went to show that there must have been hundreds of people that Hazard had hurt. Obviously at one time Annalise had hurt and killed many people under her father's word, but Hazard had not stopped. He said he only came to look for Annalise because he heard she was injured. He wanted to see that she was still alive and then he would leave again. But Annalise couldn't let him. Through all of the suffering he had caused, and this was a controversial choice, she chose to let him live, to not hand him in, and to take him with her. At the end of it all, this decision split the house right down the middle, and Annalise just couldn't let it go. Her adoptive father made it very clear that people can come through one side of the labyrinth and be spit out the other, and you know, it's not for us to decide. And some other priests that I met said he was an evil and dangerous man and that Annalise should condemn him. So it was such a dilemma. So I am actually lucky enough to still be really good friends with Hazard's player. So I actually have them to ask some questions and to talk about the scene. So one question that's always been, I guess, like burning for me is what did you and Annalise's father figure talk about when you were head butted? What did they actually say to you? Um, essentially he came out of nowhere, headbutted me. <laughs> Do you, and we say this, they, they did like a, like it was, no, no, it was no, obviously very... Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, he did grab me and put me you know, head to head, and he was just kind of whispering, um, like this, this is not you, you come back to yourself, you know, and he was starting to give you this pep talk, I'm like, okay, because uh, then he started to check me over for curses, I was like, nah. No, no, not cursed, just crazy. Yeah, I'm not cursed, I'm just... <laughs> Insane. <laughs> um, but... He was just, again, checking me off for curses, and then he, like, well, are you well, are you okay? I, I know you've been through a lot, but, uh, like, uh, she's your sister, you've been apart for years, you'd be there for her. And Hazard in that moment was in a very vulnerable position, so he was actually starting to listen to, well, at least the father figure, which he doesn't do. But because he was so vulnerable, so scared, it was like, I'm, I'm hearing you. Uh, but then eventually he snapped to his senses and wouldn't get the fuck off of me and pushed him away and steps, stepped off. So Interesting. Was... I've always wondered what they were passing because it was, speak it was so low and there was people, you know, watching and jesting, which probably shouldn't have been doing. Yeah. Um, another question I have is, how did you get away from us so fast? Uh, you, you've told me so many times you were just walking, but I, I was, don't believe it. I was just walking. There was a number of times that I was chased, I think. Yeah, we ran after you three times, three separate occasions. We ran and you just walked. Right. Well, what run me through them. What was the first time? The first one was the glory square when you walked around the back when Annalise's father figure brought attention to you and you vanished behind some tents. Yeah, that. Um, <laughs> for that one, I was just walking. I, s I noticed that I was clocked and I was like, mm, okay, time to ski the hell out of it. So I walked behind the tent. It was down on the main roads as well. And as soon as I was just out of sight, I veered off, off the main road and in, like between the, it, essentially into the alleyways of the tents. Like I walked over the guide ropes and everything and just kind of walked in a direction no one ever walks. It's yeah. like in, our, in Dawn, instead of walking towards, you know, the big council tent, I walked towards Wintermark straight from the glory square and no one thought, saw me. So, what was it actually like for you playing a character like Hazard? Ah, what a question. Um, it was... 
a very interesting experience because at the time it was my second ever LARP character, mm -hmm. so it was my second ever game. It was really. quite the entrance for being yeah. the second ever. Like I, I actually went over the how much of like a big move it was for you to be screaming and shouting at people publicly because you actually don't see that at Empire all that often. Oh. Um, so yeah, it was a big deal. You acted your ass off. It was great. Yeah, I definitely went into it not knowing that people don't normally scream. <laughs> so I might have you know, went a bit too hard. No, no, no. No, I, I think it was actually perfect. Oh yeah. Uh, it was an experience because my first love character was very pacifistic, very fatherly and very loving to a lot of people and everyone. Uh, but And then to go to a a bastard, <laughs> like an antagonist, someone who like hates life itself. It was like a lot of fun, really. That first game, it felt very good just to be this complete stone-faced arsehole who had a go at anyone who like tried to step up. People tried to step up to him and like put him in his place, but he just he stood up for himself and he shut them down. It was like a powerful experience. Yes, yeah, I get to shout at people. It's weirdly fun. I don't do it in real life, of course, but LARP. Mm -hmm. LARP. LARP. Did you have any favorite personal moments from when you played Hazard? My entrance was a lot of fun. Well, that's what this video is about. Yeah. <laughs> um, and hearing back everything that happened from someone else's perspective is fascinating. Because in my eyes, I didn't really disappear. Even though you definitely did. Apparently, I don't know what happened. I stand by it, I walked in a straight line, and I was gone. Well, you know what? If you think that you didn't disappear, I think it's time for a third opinion. So, I am actually here with a third opinion. This is my friend, and they actually played my sister at this game. My sister, Cyrus. <laughs> So, from your perspective, can we agree that Hazard disappeared? Hazard disappeared. Man clipped into the back rooms. <laughs> I, was, I was sprinting, and I'm fast, mm -hmm. and turned the corner and this man's just gone. I'm like, he's tall. Mm -hmm. So we can see. It's me and like you and like three others, we're all like, where the hell did he go? <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and you stick by that you were I walking? Stick I stick by, I was standing by the gate. I was watching like all of you from like a little bit of an elevated position and I was like, okay, how the hell am I, because I was thinking in my head, how am I going to, like, how, where am I going from here? How am I approaching the situation? Because I didn't know, I, I didn't pre-plan anything I did or I was doing, it was just happening as it happened. Um, and then I just kind of see, like, you three people just come walking up to me, I'm like, oh, well, time to, time to go. Mm -hmm. So I wished my cape, turned around, I started walking in a straight line, and I was so convinced one of them was going to be right behind me when I turned around that, in carrying, of course, uh, I grabbed my sword, kind of like pull out halfway and get ready to, like, flourish in, pull out, and someone was behind me. Okay, Zoro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to just pull it out, and if someone was right there, be like, who, who are you? And as I turn around, no one. Not, maybe no you one. clipped into a different version of the Maybe Empire. I did. Maybe I did, because I, I was like... Because well, you couldn't see us, when we, we couldn't see you. You were not there. You were not there. And it, like, if you've never been to Empire, the Anvil roads are open. They're very open and very breathy, uh, the market roads, which we were on. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you just weren't there. Hazard was gone. We thought you like jumped into a portal or a tent. I did not. I swear on my good name that I walked in a straight line. I didn't dip into any portal into any tent. I, I do remember. I believe the Anvil Library. Our, yeah. um, there's another tent that I actually can't remember the name of right now. I was like peering into them. We like, walked like halfway down that road. Mm -hmm. like. Where did, Where did he, he go? go? And then he just reappeared with like people chasing him, asking to see his eyes. And we were like, hang on a minute. Because <laughs> yeah, in my head, I did the same thing again. Because I, when I turned around, and when I thought someone was there, no one was. Like even down towards the gate, no one was there. And I was like, did I just like give up? 
because I'd walked for about 20, 30 seconds, so I thought mm -hmm. I'd, you'd at least be visible. No. No. So what I did then was I walked back to the gate, stood where I was standing before, went, let's try this again. <laughs> and um, then it worked. Then someone. Yeah, then you didn't disappear right. into the. But I swear I did the same thing twice. <laughs> So, from your point of view, mm. what was it like experiencing Hazard as a character and Wolf in all of his like acting skills? It was, well, it's different from what I was used to from Wolf because obviously I, I, we hadn't not acted opposite each other mm. before. But, you know, a like, very different character. Before it was a very, like, kind of shy but kind character. And this one was just like, fuck off. And it was like, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I am suddenly aware that I am very small. <laughs> and, um, but then there was also the part of me that had the characterization because I was like, I should be talking to you because we have an icy connection. But you're so brooding and scary. I don't know how to broach this, and I don't know if telling you Icy is gonna end up with a sword at my throat. So I'm gonna be smart because despite how colourful and like jingly and bright uh, Cyrus was, and despite the silly jokes that we made, she was a very, very smart woman. So she was like, he probably already knows. It's best to not be like, by the way. Yeah. Here's some earth-shattering news. Mm -hmm. It was like, you've just appeared and had people start attacking you for existing. Maybe... <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll just walk away and make sure that my sister's okay. 100%. Um, what Wickham is actually referring to is... Uh, Annalise found out that then also that Cyrus was their half-sister from their mother, who had defected from their father for very obvious reasons. <laughs> In three words, how would you describe Hazard as a character? Virtuous. <laughs> aggressive. Loyal. Very loyal. And when you got to play with Hazard, mm. would you do so again knowing, like, how frightening of a character he was. Like, how, how would you reapproach Hazard this time? Um, as, you know, as Cyrus or as a new character? I think if I did Cyrus again with Hazard, it, there would still be that hesitation because it's like, I know what you can do and what you can be like. And I'd rather stop being on the receiving end of that from your side of the phone. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but if it was someone else, say, Say the character I played at that feast that we were in the last yes. time, um, who doesn't really give a fuck and is very like, well, it's all about me, darling. So, right. so just, he would saunter up and be like, "You're very hot. Take your glasses off. I want to lose myself in your eyes," and then promptly get killed. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you have to lose yourself in some Piedmont eyes and promptly die. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's just the way. So we can all agree that. That was indeed a very uneasy LARP scene to endure, to be with, and that Wolf really did act his ass off as this character. Yes, he did. I blacked out for that scene, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, clearly. So, thank you, you two. This was Wolf and Wickham. These two people I have podcasts with that is called the Hearth Shield LARP Podcast. It will be linked below. If you enjoyed hearing us talk about Hazard and all things Empire, we will be doing more, so make sure you check that out. So, thank you, you two! So, that was the tale of Hazard and the first time we ever met him. I stand by that it was one of the most terrifying and uneasy first LARP scenes I have ever done with someone. I have mad respect for both and the way he acted it. But I will never forget the way he played my brother and I miss the Beaumont twins so bad. Perhaps one day they'll appear elsewhere, in a different world, in a different time. If they ever do, beware all those who meet Anna and Hazard, for you're in for quite the ride. Thank you so much for listening to this LARP story. It was definitely one of my favourite to recount and I'm so lucky that I have 
not only Wolf, but Wekum here to say that they saw it too. I really hope that you have a good rest of your day and think you've enjoyed this tale. So, my fellow Lark friends, until next time.